KQL is a query language in which you can write short and concise search queries to filter documents. Those search queries are then automatically translated into Elasticsearch queries. The purpose of KQL is to support a much more concise syntax than Elasticsearch's query DSL, which is quite verbose. The query DSL syntax is often not short and the JSON request body would not look pretty within a text field. KQL's syntax is much shorter, but still provides enough flexibility for most queries. Let's go through some KQL queries to get you familiar with the syntax. For some of the queries, I'll show you the equivalent queries for the query DSL. Note that for many of them, I've taken the liberty to rewrite the generated query DSL. The reason is that the KQL is often translated to some very verbose query DSL, which is hard to read. That's just a small price for the flexibility that KQL provides, but I want to keep things as simple as possible for you. Let's begin with the simplest example of a KQL query, simply typing in the text that we want to search for. In this example, we search for the terms products and fisher. We could of course have searched for a single term, but I want to show you how Kibana handles a free text search including multiple terms. Free text searches are translated into a multi-match query that matches all available fields for the specified terms. The type parameter is set to best fields, meaning that the best matching fields relevance score is used for each document. In the case of queries that contain multiple terms, the results will contain documents that match those terms, regardless of the order in which they appear. This means that switching the terms around has no effect on which document matched the query. If that sounds confusing, then don't worry about it, since that's just some Elasticsearch specific stuff. If you want to search for a phrase instead, you can surround the terms within quotation marks. In that case, the type of the multi-match query is set to phrase, as you can see on your screen. Under the hood, a match phrase query is run on each field, requiring the terms to appear in the specified order. While free text searches can be convenient sometimes, we often want to search specific fields. We can do that by specifying the field name followed by an operator and a value. Here's an example of searching for requests that have an HTTP status code of 404. We use the colon operator or the equals operator when searching for specific values. You'll see which other operators are available in a moment. This KQL query is translated into the following query DSL. Instead of specifying a number, we can of course also search for text values as follows. As you can see, you don't need to enclose the value within double quotes, not even if you're searching for multiple terms within the same field. If you do, however, the query will be turned into a phrase query, exactly as you saw in the context of free text searches. Instead of specifying a colon, being the equals operator, we can also specify a couple of range operators. You can see the operators on your screen along with two examples. You just saw how to search a single field for a specific value or a range of values. But what if we want to apply more constraints to the search? For instance, we might want to match the requests that had a status code between 200 and 300 being successful requests. We can do that by separating query clauses with a boolean operator being either AND or OR. In this example, we use the AND boolean operator to search for a numeric range with both a lower and upper bound. Kibana generates some really funky query DSL when using boolean operators, but luckily I've done a bit of magic, so here's what the query DSL equivalent would look like. As you can see, there's no black magic here. Similarly, we can use the OR boolean operator to match documents if either side of it evaluates to true. We don't need to use the same field on both sides of the boolean operator as in this case, but if we do, there is a handy shortcut that we can use. What we do is to enclose the value after the operator within parentheses. 
we can then separate multiple values by a boolean operator. In this example, we search for both the 404 and 500 status codes. Alright, so let's talk about how we can group query clauses together. Consider the following example. The AND boolean operator has a higher precedence than OR. This query therefore matches requests with a path of slash brands and a status code of 404 or a status code of 500. What this means is that if the status code is 500, the path can be anything. If I introduce colors to the example, you can see how the query is interpreted, with a document matching if either group evaluates to true. Perhaps that's not what we want. We might want to always require the path to equal slash brands, while the status code should be either 404 or 500. We can accomplish that by wrapping parts of the query within parentheses, which also increases the readability of the query. Query clauses that are surrounded by parentheses are referred to as groups. We can also invert query clauses by prepending them with not, such as searching for all requests where the status code is not 200. This inversion can also be done for a group by writing not just before the starting parentheses. In this example, the status code needs to be 200, but the URL path must not be one listed within the group. Last but not least, we can make use of wildcards within queries. If we only supply a wildcard, being an asterisk, as the value, this will match all documents that contain the given field. Internally, this query is translated into Elasticsearch's exists query. We can also use an asterisk as part of the value instead. This way, paths beginning with slash brands will be matched. As you can see, this is translated into the query string Elasticsearch query. Yet another way in which we can make use of wildcards is to search multiple fields. For instance, it's quite common to have a field mapped in two different ways, such as a text field that also contains a keyword mapping. Our test data actually contains a couple of such fields, because the fields are mapped according to the ECS specification. For instance, the useragent.original field is a keyword field, but it also contains a text mapping. You can see the mapping on your screen now. Let's say that we want to search both of these mappings at the same time. We could write that out as follows. That doesn't look too bad, but we can shorten it by including a wildcard within the field name as follows. This wildcard actually never reaches Elasticsearch. Because Kibana inspects the field mappings, it resolves which fields match the pattern. A match query is then constructed for each matching field, which is what is sent to Elasticsearch. Those were the basics of KQL. There are a couple of things that we haven't covered such as querying nested fields. I will leave you to explore that within the documentation if you need to, so I've attached the link to this lecture. Let's wrap up this lecture by briefly talking about the usages of KQL. Why do we spend so much time talking about it? Because it's not only used within the Discover app, but rather throughout Kibana. For instance, you can use it to apply a filter to dashboards or even individual visualizations. It's therefore quite useful to know the basics of KQL, because you'll almost certainly make use of it in one way or another.